So the next section will be two point. The thing with standard form, in my opinion, the hard part about it, um, is that it's not really bad, but then you realize it's pretty finicky. So I honestly think the hardest part of standard form is just putting it into standard form. So that's what we're going to do first. Um, so the rules of standard form is we have AX plus BY is equal to C. The A, B, and C are all just normal numbers. Um, similar to slope-intercept form and later will be point-slope form. Um, very similar to those, the X and the Y are always going to be there. Again, that's your input, that's your output, um, that's where you're plugging things in, those are your ordered pairs. So the A, B, and C are just representing numbers. So it doesn't look that terrible, um, but then they start putting these restrictions on there where A has to be a positive number, so always start with the positive, um, and you are not allowed to have any fractions. And that's the one that we know how to take care of that. We've dealt with that before, um, but that's the part that's a little bit of a hang-up. That's, I guess, in my opinion, that's the hardest part of these. So, we've done this backwards before. We started in slope intercept, or we started in um, standard form, and we went slope intercept form. Um, so now we're going backwards. So now we need to get the x and y on the same side. The x has to be first, and the big thing it is again, it has to be positive. The a, just the first term, has to be positive, and no fractions. So this first one shouldn't be too bad. I need to get the x and y on the same side, so I'm going to add three x to both sides x plus y equal to 5. Now this is where some of you guys are going to just move on to the next one, um, but if you're willing to put forth another, uh, an extra 30 seconds, you don't actually have to do work, but it's not a bad, bad idea to double check. Make sure we have x, y is equal to a number. Make sure the x is positive. Make sure there's no fractions. Doesn't take long to do that, um, but that's your answer for this one. Now, one of the reasons this is strange is because this is the first time we've ever had answers where you don't get the x by itself, or the y by itself, or the g, or the w. You don't get, you don't get a, a letter by itself. We're not solving for a specific letter. We're just putting it in this form. Um, and again, that form is the same every time we do standard form. With your x number, then your y number is equal to a whole number. So number two, this one, it looks like it's in standard form already. And this is not that hard of a problem, but a lot of people miss it just because they're going too quickly. So it looks like this one's in standard form because they have that X first, but remember, you cannot start off with a negative. Your A term can't be negative. So all you have to do to change this is multiply the whole equation by negative one. Just remember, when you do that, everything gets multiplied by negative one. So you don't have to take the time to write this out. I just want to show you. That means we have negative 1 times 2x um, plus negative 1 times 4y is equal to negative 1 times negative 7. This one gets multiplied by everything. Now, again, most of you guys won't write that stuff out. I wouldn't if I were you. I don't even recommend it for this one. Um, because when you multiply by negative 1 like that, all it does is change all of your signs. So the negative 2 becomes a positive 2. It's negative 1 times negative 2. The positive 4 becomes a negative 4, because negative 1 times 4. And the negative 7 becomes a positive 7, because negative 1 times negative 7 is positive 7. So again, if I were you, I would just get down to that step. Multiply by negative 1, all it does is change all the signs. So that's the key. A lot of people multiply by negative 1, and they either just change the 2, or some people change the 2 and the 7, but they forget about the 4. Make sure it's every single term. You need to make sure that changes. Um, so number three is a culmination between number one and two. Um, first thing we have to do is get that x to the other side. Negative five x plus three y is equal to negative eight. But again, we're not quite done yet because just like number two, we have that negative in there. So now I need to take that, change the whole thing, multiply the whole thing by negative one. That gives me positive five x minus three y is equal to positive eight. So now X number, my Y number is equal to my first number, my A term, is positive, and there are no fractions. Before we move on to number four, are there any questions on those? Uh, 
Sum was number four. No matter what order you do this in, there's a couple different ways you can do this. Um, but my, in my opinion, the best one is to get rid of fractions first. Uh, technically, you could add the two thirds x to both sides. Add the two x to both sides, or sorry, the two over three x to both sides. Then you could get rid of the fraction. Um, I just think it's a lot easier to do that um, to get rid of the fraction right away. That way, it's not haunting you. It's not complicated. I think some people panic when they see two over three x on both sides. Not that that's bad, it's just not what we're used to. So for me, I'm going to multiply everything to get rid of that denominator. Now the good news is before when we got rid of fractions, we had more than one fraction, so we had to find the least common multiple. We had to multiply everything. Well, now there's just one, so we multiply everything by 3. So this whole thing gets multiplied by 3. So that means we have 3 times y is equal to 3 times negative 2 over 3x plus 3 times 4. If you want to look at like distributing, you distribute that to every single term. Get it? So 3 times y is 3y. This one, the 3's cancel. When the 3's cancel, you do not multiply by 3 anymore. All we have is a negative 2x. Now, step is confusing. I wish I would have thought to say this earlier. Um, I told some people when they were doing the chapter review for last test, these can cancel out. Negative 2 over 3. You put that in as a fraction. It'll get you to say nothing. That's the thing that's throwing you off. Um, use your calculator. Just take 3, multiply by that fraction. Again, your calculators, you can do fractions. Um, so use that to your advantage if you need to. Then 3 times 4 is 12. Now, once we have that, we have no fractions left. That's the whole goal. That was the whole idea. But now we need to get it in the right form where we get that A first. So our X number comes first. So just like the other ones, add 2X to both sides. 2X plus 3Y is equal to 12. That then is your answer. Personal opinion, that's the hardest part of today. Standard form, when you have questions, then you have to look at some other things. So hopefully when I say that, you guys are like, oh, this isn't bad. Um, but if you're like, yeah, this is really bad, obviously it's all the hardest part. That's fine, just make sure you get practice with this. So moving on to number five, obviously number five, just looking at it, it's a little bit more difficult because we have more than one fraction. Well, again, we just did this before when we had the 3 and the 5. Um, so we have a 3 and a 5. Uh, the least common multiple or the common denominator, I would probably use the 15. Remember, you can use 30 if you want to. You could use, I almost said 100. That wouldn't work because 3 doesn't go into it. Um, as long as you use a number that 5 can multiply to get and 3. So 60. You can use 60. 3 times 20, 5 times, 50, 5 times 12. Um, you can use 60. And you get some big numbers, but you can use a calculator. It would all reduce down in the end. Um, but I think 15 is the easiest one. So I'm going to multiply this whole thing, just like we did the other one, by 15. I do think for these problems, it's worth writing out 15 times 1 over 5. Y is equal to 15 times negative 1. Get subtracted, or you can say this is plus 15 times negative 2 over 3. Either one works. A negative, or you're using the fraction call. Now, this is where that hint using your calculator might come into play a little bit more. Um, because if you cross out 15 and 5 and those are the whole thing is 15 by by 5 is 3. So when you do cross and you see with that, Rather than having 15 times 1 over 5, you can cancel it out so you just have 3 times 1. So 3 times 1 y is 3 y. But again, if that is confusing, that's what we struggle with. We've done this before, so hopefully you guys know what we struggle with. Just type in your calculator 15 times 1 over 5, put that fraction in there, it'll get you the same answer. 
but it's messing you up. Um, and like I said, you guys just had it on the test. I hit it back Friday. Um, if that's what's messing you up, just use your calculator and do 15 times more over five. Work and I'll still get you the same answer. 15 times negative 1 is negative 15. Don't forget to multiply that whole number. A lot of people forget that. And then same thing, 15 over negative 2 thirds. If you want to multiply that, 15 multiplied by negative 2 over 3x, you can do that. That's fine. You'll get the right answer. Multiply by 3 is 5. So now instead of 15 times negative 2 over 3, I have 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Either one, like I said, will get you the same answer. Once we're down this step, now we just get that x on the other side. Now we just add 10x to both sides. x plus 3y is equal to negative 15. And again, honestly, you could have taken a, you could have moved the x on the other side first and then got rid of your fraction. I just, I like to get rid of the fractions right away. Um, maybe it's just my personality is I like to try to get the hard stuff done early so that I can relax the rest of stuff. Um, so maybe that's what I like to do that way. I don't know. But whatever way it works for you is fine. Just make sure you're getting rid of the fractions and make sure your A is positive, your first number. Now, the last one, again, we're going to get into a lot more with point slope form um, on Tuesday, I believe. So this is point slope form. The only difference is a lot of times when you do point slope form, this right here, just a spoiler alert, that's your slope. Now, you guys all know with slope intercept form that uh, your slope a lot of times is a fraction. Um, so I haven't done any with fractions yet. That's what we're going to learn with point slope form. Um, but we can kind of get a little introduction. Just like we did before, when we got things in slope intercept form, the first thing I would do with this is I would distribute out that 2. So I have y minus 10 is equal to 2x minus 6. Once you have that, now we need to get the x on the other side. So subtract 2x. And here, again, there's a couple different ways you could do this or a different order. So negative 2x plus y minus 10 is equal to negative 6. Hopefully you realize that doesn't quite look right. And so you realize we have to get rid of that negative 10. We have to add that to both sides. So we're getting closer. Negative 2x plus y is equal to negative 6 plus 10 is positive 4. And last but not least, again, we need to get rid of that negative sign, so we need to multiply everything by negative 1. And all that does is change your sign. So that's positive 2x minus y is equal to negative 4. Just don't forget, even that 4, you need to make it to its negative. One sign, change all. I think Shakespeare said that in Hamlet. Just kidding, I made that up too. To be or not to be. If you're going to change one sign, you've got to change all of them. That's the question. Any questions on these before we do the you do part? All right, go ahead. Do those other two on your own. Once you're done with those, we will move on. All right, my answer for number seven, number eight are up there. Um, keep in mind, again, the biggest mistake that a lot of people make with this, the two mistakes. Um, when you multiply everything by a number, make sure you're also multiplying ones that are not fractions. Um, so like a number eight, make sure the y gets also multiplied by six. Everything gets multiplied. Um, the other mistake that a lot of people make, um, with a problem, for instance, this one, where they cancel out their fours just like they're supposed to, but then for whatever reason, they still take four times three is twelve. Uh, 12 x there. So look at your work. If you had a 12 here, that's the whole idea is that the fours cancel each other. If you're not going to cancel those fours, then 4 times 3 is 12. If you 12 over 4, 12 divided by 4 is 3. Um, which, again, if you just need to type that in your calculator, that'll work. Any questions on those before we move on? 
Make sure you're doing those on your own. If you don't know how to do those, make sure you're asking. That's kind of the idea with that. So the next part of this, um, this is finding the wider set, the x-intercept, the slope. Um, I'll be honest with you guys, uh, this is, so essentially this is how to graph in standard form. Um, if I'm being honest, I hate graphing in standard form. If it was up to me, I would just put in slope intercept form because that's what we're used to. We've done that a lot. Um, that shouldn't be that big of an issue. Uh, so number nine, the way I would do that one, and you don't have to write this down if you don't want to because I'm going to redo it this other way, um, but I would put this in slope intercept form, and we've done that already. We subtract 3x from both sides. So you get 4y is equal to negative 3x plus 24. Then I divide everything by 4. So you get y is equal to negative 3 over 4x. Um, 24 over 4 is 6. So that's what I would do, and that's how I would graph this one. However, um, they're not only going to ask you to graph, they're going to ask for the x and y intercepts, and so we're going to do standard form. Now, again, the reason I do still slope intercept form is because we do it very often. Um, so hopefully we're pretty good at that. Not only that, I don't think we do this, but if they ever have an inequality, it's really hard to graph an inequality when you don't put it in slope intercept form um, because your shading might be off. Um, essentially, you might end up dividing by negative, but you don't know that if you didn't divide and you just found your x and y intercepts. But again, we don't really do that. Um, so I'll leave this up here. Sorry, my handwriting is pretty bad for that one. Um, I'll leave that up there. Uh, but this is how to do your x and y intercept and find your slope for these. So the x and y intercept, um, I call the cover-up method. But really the reason is because, really quickly, is to find your x-intercept, you sub zero in for y. Now this is the reason for that. And if you don't want to pay attention to this, it's not going to be make or break. As long as you listen to what I tell you after this, you'll be fine. Um, but for some of you guys, it's going to help you remember. It's not encouraging, but it's certainly not a requirement. It's just uh, do memorization. So your x-intercept, this is your x-axis. So your x-intercept is somewhere on this line. Now that whole line, every point that is on the x-axis, the y value is zero. Because the y value tells you how much you go up or down. So if the y value is anything other than zero, that means we go up a little bit or down a little bit. So we are not on the x-axis, which means it's not the x-intercept. Same thing with your y-intercept. With your y-intercept, your x has to be zero. And the reason for that is because if you go left or right at all, you're not on the y-axis anymore, so it's not the y-intercept. So anytime from now until forever, if they ever talk about the y-intercept, you know that your x value is going to be zero. So when we do quadratics later and graphing quadratics or graphing absolute values that we'll do later, if you ever want to know the y-intercept, you plug zero in for x every single time, no matter what your equation is. Now, that is why we're doing this. But really, a lot of times they call that the cover-up method, or the eye patch method, or the patch eye method, which I've never heard to set in that order, but apparently some people say patch eye instead of eye patch. And if that's you, I don't mean to offend you, but you're a weirdo. Um, so, basically what I just said, for the y-intercept, I'm sorry, for the x-intercept, your y-value is zero. For your x-intercept, the y-value is zero. Which means you just plug in zero for that. So don't write this down quite yet. We have 3x plus 4 times 0 is equal to 24. Well, 4 times 0 is just 0. Well, 3x plus 0 is just 3x. So we end up with 3x is equal to 24. So you divide both sides by 3. You get your way to to be 8. Now, again, don't write that down. If you didn't write it down, you can, uh, I mean, you don't have to erase it. But that is what we're, that's why we're doing what we're doing. We plug zero in for one. And honestly, that's how I was taught. Now, when you plug zero in for y, I shouldn't even write said this. What you notice happened is the y disappeared. So that's what we call the eye patch method, or I call the cover-up method. If you want to know what your x-intercept is, you just cover up your y value. So now if you cover that up, all we have is 3x is equal to 24. Now it's easy to solve. Divide both sides by 3, minus x-intercept is 8. 
So for your X intercept, you just cover up your Y, completely cover it up. And then the exact opposite of that, when you're finding your Y intercept, all you need to do is cover up your X. So we have 4y is equal to 24. Now when we have that, we divide both sides by 4. You end up getting your y-intercept is equal to 6, not 8. That doesn't make any sense. So we'll talk about the slope in a little bit, but we're going to stop with there for right now. So my x-intercept is 8, my y-intercept is 6. Now I have worked with people that make you guys put those as ordered pairs. Um, so your x-intercept would be 8, 0. Your y-intercept would be 0, 6. Um, and I maybe should do that because it does get you the concept of where the 0 goes. Um, and maybe we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but for right now, if I just say your x-intercept, that's your 8. Just make sure you realize that goes on the x-axis. That's what an x-intercept is. A lot of people mess this up. A lot of people do um, over 8, up 6 or something like that. No, it's two points. They're right on your x-axis and your y-axis. Um, so your x-axis, I'm going to go over 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that is your x-intercept. Your y-intercept is 6. So you go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's up here. And then you connect that to get your uh, line. Now, if you look at our original equation that I told you guys didn't have to do, I put the slope-intercept form. My y-intercept is 6, so I have that. And my slope is negative 3 over 4, so if you go down 3 over 4, down 3 over 4, you'll realize it is the exact same line. So, I don't care if you want to put in slope-intercept form. The only thing, the only reason I would determine that right now is because that's for your x and y-intercept. The slope-intercept form, it's easy to find your y-intercept at 6, but to find your x-intercept, again, you're going to have to do the cover-up method, you're going to have to solve some things, it's going to be a little bit more um, difficult for you. So last but not least, finding the slope. Now the hard way to find the slope is just like it did at the beginning, you can find your slope intercept form. That's what I used to do. If they wanted the slope, I would just put it in slope intercept form and then I can see my slope is negative three over four. But the formula for your slope is negative A over B. And again, when they talk about A and B, they're talking about this standard form like this. So it's the opposite of your first number over your second number. When you see that negative, you can think of it like that, the opposite of your first number. Um, so if I look at my equation here, the opposite of 3 is negative 3 over my second number is 4. That's what I said my slope was. Um, you should already have your graph from your x and y intercepts. But again, this third thing is a really good way to check your work because if you get a different slope that doesn't match your graph, you know you did something wrong, whether it's your slope, your x intercept, your y intercept you know you can go back and check some of those things. But that's all that formula is. Now again, on your test, I will give you a formula sheet. I don't know if that's going to look like yet. I haven't done that yet. But on your quiz, I'm not doing that because you have no, I mean, I just gave you the formula. You can use your notes. So make sure you have these notes. Obviously, that'll help. All right, moving on to number 10. Um, to find your x-intercept, and I guess I should before I start this, the most common mistake with this one is people that are looking for their x-intercept cover up their x. The way I remember this is if I'm looking for my x-intercept, I need to keep my x. That's the whole idea. If I want my x-intercept, I'm keeping my x, I'm getting rid of the y. So that's the hard part is trying to figure, remember which one you cover up. So we have 2x is equal to 10, divide both sides by 2, my x-intercept is 5. My y-intercept, cover up my x. Don't forget, that negative stays with a 5. That's very important. So that's negative 5y is equal to 10. Divide both sides by negative 5. You end up getting negative 2. And last but not least, your slope is the opposite of a over b. So negative 2 over negative 5, which I would round or I would reduce to positive 2 over 5. So when we graph this answer, my y-intercept is negative 2. That's down here. My x-intercept is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And last but not least, if you want to double-check your work, not a bad idea to do your slope. 
and we're up two over five. That is the exact same line, so we know we're good. Now, the last thing I'll say with this, before I move on to the next, actually, the ones next are maybe you do section. Yeah. The last thing I'll say with this before I move on, I did this on purpose where I did number nine first before number 10. I did that equation because with number 10, what a lot of people notice is that their x intercept was this number with the y, and their y intercept is the number in the center with this x. That's not always the case. The only reason that worked out for this one is because it just so happened to be the 2 times sine is 10. That's the only reason. Over here, it's not like that. My x intercept was not anywhere close to 4. My, uh, sorry, my x intercept. My y intercept wasn't anywhere close to 3 or 4. So make sure you keep that in mind. Don't think you just found a shortcut because it works on some of them. That is one of the most common mistakes. All right, so go ahead and do those other ones on your own. I'll put the answers up here in a second. Again, if you don't know how to do these on your own, you need to be asking. That's the whole part. If you're just going to sit there and not do anything until I put the answer, that's not helping yourself. So both my answers are there. Uh, one thing I didn't mention before, but you could do this, and I'm not going to encourage it because I'd rather you check your work. Um, but one way you could do this, if, uh, to find your slope, it's you know, if you don't remember that formula, you could do the rise over run from here. So you could go up 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, 2, 4 over 2, reduce it down to 2. So if you just did your graph first, you could do your rise over run. The two reasons I would tell you to avoid that is because, first and foremost, again, you can check your work with that. If you use this formula to find your slope as 2, then go over and do the slope of 2 and make sure it actually all checks out. Make sure everyone's good. That's a really quick and easy way to check your work. The other reason is because if you start getting in the habit of that where you don't use that formula, there will be questions that just say, what's the slope for this one? Like, I think there's an multiple choice question on the test or the quiz that could be wrong that just says, what's the slope of this line and it's in standard form? Well, yes, you could grab graph paper, you could graph it, you could count, that would be fine. Um, but it's a little bit quicker if you can do that slope formula for me. Or put in slope intercept form. That's another method. All right. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, you have about a little less than 10 minutes to work on your worksheet and or do your homework check. Again, if you need anything, don't hesitate to ask.